Hello and welcome to Bajaj Exam Prep IS. As part of a comprehensive news analysis, today we'll be discussing eight important topics out of the Hindu newspaper daily edition. But before we begin, an important announcement for you: there are two offline workshops which are going to happen on 4th June. One in Chennai and the other one in Hyderabad. I would encourage you to go there, interact with our faculty, and you can get to know about other different aspects about your preparation. There will also be a small test which will be taken so as to see where is your level. So I encourage you, if you are in these cities, to go and interact with these faculties and be a part of our offline workshop on 4th June 2023. With this, let's begin our basic discussion for today. Good morning to all of you. So very interesting eight topics we have. We have first on biodiversity and it talks about how a multi-stakeholder approach is needed. Then graphene, a very important topic for GS Paper 3 generally. Thereafter, the 2000 rupee note which has been in the news quite a lot now. Thereafter, we'll talk about the GDP which has now expanded to 6.1%, taking it to 7.2% 7, 7 for the whole year itself, for this quarter itself. Thereafter, OTT platforms and how we need to, now they need to technically introduce anti-tobacco warnings. Then the Pradhan Mantri GAY concept itself, we'll discuss how it has impacted people. Further, we'll talk about two very important schemes which the government is thinking about. First, about grain storage and the second one about the cities. This is a very interesting acronym which they've given to this is not related to endangered species but related to urban development and we'll talk about that so we have eight different platforms eight different concepts which we need to discuss through this paper and we will try to go through the basic level to the highest level possible in that regard so with this let's begin our first discussion for biodiversity now, as always, I will give you the basic context of the article first, then we'll go into the nitty gritty and then we'll end with a summary. So the basic point of this article is very simple. It says that biodiversity is very important. Biodiversity or the natural world gives us a lot of things. It allows us for mitigation of climate change. It allows us for food and shelter. It even is important for now pollution management. Natural processes are becoming more and more important for the way we mitigate our global warming and generally how we can go forward in a sustainable future. However, what it argues is that though biodiversity has been extremely important, the government and the civil society at some level has failed to basically in a way, in a way, respond to the needs of the biodiversity and mitigate biodiversity destruction. So it says that the most important stakeholder for biodiversity conservation in India is actually the IFOS, which is Indian Forest Services. And it rather says that because it is called forest services, it tends to argue that the only biodiversity we are caring about, and this is technically a colonial concept itself, is the forest. So the forest landscape is the only landscape which we are actually caring about. However, biodiversity, biomes and biospheres are much more diverse. So in the sense that we have the ocean biosphere, we have the different biomes related to grassland, different type of trees, different type of biodiversity, what we call as spheres and hotspots in that sense. So why are we only talking about land? Why are we not talking about ocean? Why are we not talking about the river ecosystem? Why are we not talking about an ecotone? So very simply, the IFOS concept, the Indian Forest Service, does not do justice to the concept of biodiversity. So what the artic article basically then talks about is that we need to go beyond this one landscape approach to a multi-landscape approach in which we give as much as importance to the forest to the oceans, to the rivers, to the seas and over and above that we also need to change our approach because as of right now we have a top down approach in which the government is dictating everything and the stakeholders are just getting the basic directives. What it is arguing is we need to change our approach in the sense that we need a down up approach in which all the stakeholders come together and a multi-landscape, multi-stakeholder program should be there for biodiversity. So very simply, very simply, the 
three concepts which have been discussed in this article and that is what is important for your GS paper 3 is that biodiversity is important. It mitigates a lot of things. It gives us a lot of things for pollution, for climate change, for global warming. It is the solution for a sustainable future itself. Now, when biodiversity is this, thereafter, we in India have the most important stakeholder of or the custodian of this biodiversity in the Indian Forest Services, a proper institutionalized service which is there within the government of India. But it has this forest centric approach and therefore we need to change it and then it talks about this approach of top down and down up and the most important word is multi landscape and multi stakeholder that we need to change our approach both in the way we understand what we call as biodiversity and in the same way we understand the concept of stakeholders. It is not just the Indian, for Indian Forest Service officer or the government of India which has to find a solution. It has to be everybody and therefore a multi-stakeholder, multi-landscape approach is what is needed. So the simplest of concepts out of all this which is given in this editorial is that we need to have first an appreciation for what biodiversity does for us. Second is the concept of the forest service and how it is limiting in that sense. And third is the concept of changing the approach which now needs a new type of vocabulary based on multi-landscape, multi-stakeholder approach. And it talks about a program which has also been running via vis-a-vis -vis the biodiversity program has been taken into the NGO or what we call as private sphere. And it also talks about private and public partnership also in that regard that only when all the stakeholders come together from the smallest communities to the private sector to the public sector, then only we can actually save our forests or any other landscape which is there. So this is the basic point of the article and I hope that you get this point. If you do, then we'll go into the nitty gritty of what it's trying to argue. First, biodiversity, approach, Indian Forest Service and how do we need to change our basic vocabulary. Is this clear everyone? Then we'll move to the second aspect which is the detailed approach here. Yes? Great. Okay. So, the International Biodiversity Day was recently observed on May 22nd. This is very important looking at how prelims is asking questions on different days. Very, very important International Biodiversity Day on 22nd of May. And it talks about how biodiversity or the natural world has played a very important role in different type of mitigations. But we are not giving a lot of heed to its conservation. So how does biodiversity help us? It helps us in the form of the least expensive mechanism to capture carbon, cap carbon sequestration. Further, it gives us food, shelter, medicines, mental, recreational and spiritual enrichment and encouragement. Further, it allows for degraded land, pollution, polluted rivers, oceans to sustain themselves. And these processes are very, very important for a new sustainable future. Further, the concept of green economy is only possible when we take biodiversity into the picture. However, what the article argues is that we have failed to adequately conserve and manage our precious resources and the civil society, which is you and me, must take a critical role in sustaining our biodiversity. Therefore, what it is arguing is that only the government cannot do everything. We as the people of India, we as a community, as mankind, we have to make sure that we also become a stakeholder in this whole process. So this tells you the importance of biodiversity. Hereafter, hereafter, the limitation or the limiting approach here is that we tend to see the natural world as Indian Forest Service. Therefore, the word forest only describes a unique ecosystem and natural heritage we have. We need to also expand the meaning of our Indian Forest Service or the governmental approach towards it by adding water bodies, rivers, deltas, oceans, everything. Basically, we are fully missing the what you call oceanic or the sector which is based on which is non-land in that sense. So therefore, we need to also take into account grasslands, savannas, pastures, deserts. Every ecosystem is important, equally critical for the whole health of the earth. And therefore, we need a multi-
multifunctional landscape. This is the first word which you are going to use in your mains answer. Now mains preparation should have begun. For anybody who is writing the paper, very very important. Multifunctional landscape. These are the words which they are going to use in the questions. So multifunctional landscape based on aspirations, beliefs and traditional knowledge and direct participation of communities are central. This is a very important point. The landscape needs to be multifunctional and communities need to be take, come, come, need to come together. Therefore, the landscape also needs to be multi and the community also needs to go with it. So when the community and the landscape come together, then only we can conserve our most important what we call as resource, which is biodiversity. And in that context, how do we move forward? It talks about the national mission on biodiversity and human well-being. This is the first thing which you need to remember. Second is the fact that this mission is trying to meet the challenges of climate change, regeneration of agriculture, ecosystem and public health using biodiversity. However, the most important concept which is introduced in this article and which you should use in the examination is the fact that we need to now change. If biodiversity is everywhere, we must mainstream our daily actions, develop a program in every government department and further decentralize the management of biodiversity by bringing it to the multiple stakeholders, local communities, Gram Sabhas and different committees. This is a very important point which this article is making that very simply we need to decentralize control. The simple point of the matter is we have centralized control in the form of the Indian Forest Service. Centralization which would mean a top down approach needs to be changed to decentralization which is a down up approach. This is a very important point. So top bottom, which is the concept right now or top down needs to become bottom to the top wherein the decentralized communities are telling us what to do with their biodiversity or their biomes in that regard. Now, this is a very important point you need to remember. This is the article is been written in a very vague way, but the basic point is this only that we need to change our approach. So biodiversity is important for us. Indian Forest Service is very, very limiting. Now we have what is called a centralized top down approach. We need to make it multifunctional landscape, multi stakeholder, public and private concept over and above that down up is what we are looking for a decentralized. Please remember this word. This will help you in writing unique answers in the in the mains examination. So I hope all of this is clear. If it is clear, then we move to the next article, which is based on an e equally interesting concept, which is graphene. Yes, everybody. Very good, Priyanka. Great. Okay. Top to bottom. See, uh, top to bottom is when the government takes decisions and we implement it. So this is called centralization because a centralized bureaucracy actually does it. On the other hand, bottom to up is the reverse of that in which we tell the government what to legislate on. So we understand the local needs. Therefore, this is a decentralized governance strategy in that regard. This is a centralized governance strategy. Top down is centralized, down up or Bottom up is what we call as decentralized. Decentralization is generally considered important because that is the future. When people have a stake in governance, that is a very good way of representative democracy and generally governance in that regard. So now we move to graphene. Now what the article is, it's been written by a very important personality. He's a professor in IIT Kanpur and also the former defense secretary. He gives a very, very beautiful way of defining graphene and why graphene is important. There are again three things which are being discussed here. Why is graphene important? What is the global situation when it comes to graphene as a produ producer and as a consumer and patents? And third is how does India need to change its approach? Because what he's arguing is that are we missing the bus or the train or whatever? 
आर वी मिसिंग द ऑपरचुनिटी टू एक्चुअली हार्नेस द पावर ऑफ ग्रेफीन नाउ द फर्स्ट एंड फॉर मोस्ट पॉइंट इज गोइंग टू बी वॉट इज ग्रेफीन नाउ दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर साइंस जी एस पेपर थ्री इट इज वन ऑफ द थिनेस्ट स्ट्रॉन्गेस्ट एंड मोस्ट कंडक्टिव मटीरियल फॉर बोथ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड हीट एंड इट कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बेटर देन कॉपर फर्दर इट इज टू हंड्रेड टाइम्स स्ट्रॉगर देन स्टील बट सिक्स टाइम्स लाइटर देन स्टील इट कैन एक्चुअली बी मोर और लेस ट्रांसपेरेंट इट इज परफेक्टली ट्रांसपेरेंट विद ओनली टू परसेंट ऑफ द लाइट इट कैन विच इट एब्सॉर्ब इट्स अ वंडर मटीरियल यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल इट अ रेवल्यूशनरी मटीरियल ग्रेफीन जेनरली हैज बीन सीन एज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डिस्कवरी वेन इट कम्स टू मटीरियल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कंडक्टिविटी और बीट हीट और इलेक्ट्रिसिटी दिस मटीरियल इज रेवल्यूशनरी बिकॉज वंस एडेड टू द एग्जिस्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर्स और एग्जिस्टिंग मटीरियल देर प्रॉपर्टी चेंजेस एंड इट हैज मल्टी फंक्शनल यूज इन मल्टीपल सेक्टर्स सो बिकॉज इट इज सो इम्प्रेग्नेबल टू गैसेज as light as hydrogen and helium it has revolutionary use in electricity conductivity energy generation batteries and sensors further it can be added to other materials once added to other materials it can dramatically change the qualities of that material and therefore in aerospace automotive and sports and construction sector sports construction sector automotive and aerospace sector everywhere if graphene is added to any of the materials it changes its property in a better way and we can use materials in a much much better effective sense in that regard further further it can be used in high performance batteries super capacitors touch screens it has also use in the healthcare sector because you can use it in wearable devices in healthcare generally graphene based masks were also there in covid 19 it is used for war water purification desalination and in defense and aerospace as of right now today it is considered the most important material because it can be used in bulletproof vests because it can absorb a lot of energy in that regard so because it can absorb and dissipate a lot of electromagnetic waves also stealth technology radar signatures can be reduced by using graphene graphene is very expensive but it's a very revolutionary concept itself so the first aspect is what is graphene and why is it important and here very simply it is a very important material which is 200 times stronger than steel but 6 times lighter than steel further conducts very well both electricity and heat which means that it can be used in any of the battery systems or energy generation systems further if graphene is added to any of the material it changes the property of that material for making it stronger or it makes it better to conduct therefore it can be used in even the concept of conductivity in super capacitors and the most important in defense as of right now it has the best use because it can dissipate a lot of energy so it can be used in bulletproof vest and further it is its signature on electromagnetic wave is very very less so therefore in radar what is called stealth technology to undercut radars the radar signature is very very less so graphene is a revolutionary material in that regard now comes the question who is who is the foremost when it comes to its production and its research and herein lies the problem of india's approach wherein wherein though this market has the potentiality to grow by 50% by 2030 and as of right now is 175 million dollars a market of graphene is that but it will increase by 50% and more it's a very important concept but 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 india is lacking when it comes to its production and even its research and patents because as of right now china the us uk japan south korea russia and singapore are the only countries which have the most important research ability and labs for graphene if you look at the patents till 2012 itself the us and the chinese are the ones who are foremost when it comes to research 
So from 2013 to 2016, before 2012 it was only the US, from 2013 to 2016 it is South Korea and China which have matched the US after that. India has only filed 8 patents for what we call as graphene. But the most important concept is who produces it. China and Brazil are the global producers of graphene. India produces one twelfth as compared to China which, add, which has one third in that regard. So that way India's production is quite small and India's research capacity is also quite small. So now we understand the fact that graphene is important. We understand that China and South Korea as of right now are playing a very important role in research. It used to be the US previously but it is China and Brazil who are producing it in bulk and India's signature is one twelfth very small in that regard now now how do we change this this is the basic it's a optimistic article we change it through our own policy interventions so we're now going to the third aspect which is the India has to play a very important role in its production and in that government has to play a equally crucial role because China declared graphene as a priority in its thir 13th plan, the planned economy of the People's Republic of China. Further, you have the European graphene flagship program, which has a budget of close to 1 billion euros. India needs to now get its act together with regards to graphene because we need to change our approach. We need a nodal ministry or a mission. We need to entrust the responsibility to the government to put in the incentives to go for research for graphene. India needs to be among the leader in graphene production. As it is, it's the winner takes the most situation as of right now. Whoever can actually harness the power of graphene can change its economy, its defense and generally its future very, very quickly. We have research which is happening in IISC Bangalore, in IIT Kanpur, even Tata Steel has been experimenting with it. But the basic point of the matter is we need a further push. So before I go to the third topic, let me give you a basic understanding of what we've done till this point. We understood the concept of biodiversity, how is it important, how we need a multifunctional, multi-stakeholder approach vis-a-vis -vis what we call as the concept of biodiversity conservation. Everybody needs to become a part of it. Decentralization of biodiversity con conservation and propagation. This article very simply talks about three very simple concepts. A lab produced material called graphene. Graphene very important, very light but very very strong. Further conducts very very well. Has a use in every sector which you can think about. Specifically defense and healthcare. Most important concept is as of right now, China, South Korea and US are foremost when it comes to research. But we need to change our approach. China and Brazil are the biggest producers. India has the capacity to produce it. But for that we need research, we need patents and therefore, therefore we need a nodal ministry or at least a flagship program which can push. Very simply we need to incentivize graphene production in India and graphene research what we call as research in India. So these two very simple articles have given you two very important concepts. Decentralized control of biodiversity and graphene and how do we go forward in that regard. So I hope till this point everybody is with me, no issues at all. Then we'll move to the third topic which is again very interesting vis-a-vis -vis the 2000 rupee note. Yes? Stealth technology graphene because graphene absorbs electromagnetic radiation and can also reflect it. Therefore, if put into a fighter jet, it will have more or less, more or less very small signature on the radars. Therefore, it becomes a stealthy jet fighter. That is. Okay, perfect. Now with this, we move to something which is going to become history later. Is it 2000 rupee note? And what very simply we need to understand here is a, a lot of data has been given that basically 2000 rupee note had already become redundant before the government actually took a call on 19th May to actually remove it from circulation. So before withdrawing the 2000 rupee note, the central bank very straightforward justified that 5000 and 
1000 were 500 and 1000 were removed therefore there was a need for a high denomination we now don't need it because it has fulfilled its objectives so very simply because we we demonetize we had 500 and 1000 too much volume so 2000 was doing the job but now 2000 is not needed but if you look at the data we have taken this decision in 2023 but more or less after 2018 19 and by 2020 2000 rupee note had already become redundant when it comes to its volume its use and its production and now how do i actually how do i actually support this or how does this article support this argument are these four tables which we are going to analyze and it will help you generally in understanding what was the situation when this was this decision was taken so the first is this very interesting graph it talks about the various denominations and the circulation of banknotes in the way it was in percentage so percentage of total value of banknotes in circulation so if you see before demonetization or before that period the 1000 rupee note and the 500 rupee note is what actually was extremely important thereafter after this point the 2000 rupee note came through and 500 started to expand but we don't care about that right now what we care about is this as of 2023 the share of 2000 had already gone very very small vis-a-vis -vis 500 and percentage of 2000 rupee note vis-a-vis -vis 500 was already very less we have 200 we have 100 but very simply post demonetization the simple point of the matter is 2000 was very important initially because of the withdrawal of 1000 and 500 therefore they needed to absorb that money circulation that denomination and that allowed for 2000 to be in circulation but thereafter it has been steadily declining so very simply as of march of 2023 2000 rupee note total value of 2000 in the whole money circulation in the economy had already dipped to 10.8 percent as compared to 50 percent share which was there in march of 2017 so as of right now it is 50 percent now it is only 10 percent so already we have absorbed the 2000 rupee note close to 40 percent of it and therefore it was more or less becoming redundant in that regard 77 percent of all value right now today is in the 500 bank note so this is a very interesting data that 77 percent of all the value of the indian economy when it comes to bank notes is in 500 so you can see that very simply this meant that 200 was more or less becoming redundant this is the first thing you need to understand this is the first graph which gives you a very interesting picture of what is the present scenario in which 2000 has been removed therefore 10 percent we need to absorb or needs to be taken out of the economy itself 77 percent till five but this is very interesting that how from 50 percent we've already brought it down to 10 percent then if you look at the volume volume lakh pieces is left axis left axis and the value of total bank road in circulation is on the right axis of 2000 rupee now if you look at it after peaking in 2018 the vo volume and the value percentage has also been going down for 2000 so very simply very simply the value and the volume both have been going down steadily see 2000 rupee note production was stopped in 2018-19 and chart 2 shows you that after a gradual peak in the 2018 period it has been steadily declining so after peaking in 2018 with 33,000 lakh pieces of 2000 rupee note by end of March of 2023 46% dip to 18,000 lakh pieces moreover we already stopped production at this point so from close to 33,000 lakh pieces we are now at 18,000 lakh pieces so 46% dip is already there so you can see RBI had already been preempting you don't have to learn the data you don't have to learn the data you just need to understand the trend 
the trend is that RBI had already been moving towards this move. It's not a sudden move by 50% to 10% to the fact that 46% reduction in the num volume of pieces is already there. So if they ask you the justification, if they ask you the reason, you should be in a position to understand and argue that it's actually not that they've taken a sudden step. Because if you look at it, the basic volume, the basic data shows a decline already. Now, if we move further, this is the most interesting out of all of them. It shows you supply of banknotes in various de denominations. So between 2016 and 17, we had the highest for 2000 rupee note. Thereafter, after 2018, the supply was stopped. Now, very simply, if you correspondingly check the 500 rupee note, it remained stagnant at one point of time and has now gone down when it comes to the supply of banknotes. So the interesting aspect is that the discontinuation of the supply of 2000 rupee notes did not mean that we had to exponentially increase the production of 500 or print 500 more. No, rather we see an uptick in the 100 rupee note and an uptick in the 200 rupee note. But we have been able to offset 2000 via the 200, the 100 and the 200 rupee note. So very simply, there is no direct correlation between removing 2000 and adding 500. Therefore, we have been very successfully been able to since 2018-19 to remove the 2000 out of production, but also not lead to a very long uptick or very steady exponential uptick in 500. So the supply of 2000 was stopped. The supply of 500 did not see a commensurate rise and remain stagnant. Therefore, the withdrawal of 2000 rupee note did not directly increase to this more supply or increase in supply of 500. So very simply, very simply, there could be a new high value note which would come in. But a simple point of the matter is this shows you the the independent relationship of 500 and the 2000. So the first first I'll give you I'll tell you what to do with this data. The first chart tells you how 500 is now dominating the money supply or the money circulation and from 50% in 2017 18 to close to 10% of the money today is in 2000 which is already a very important development because 40% of the money supply money circulation in the economy was reduced via adding more 500 and removing 2000 this can be correspondingly seen in the volume of 2000 rupee notes in the market itself. The most important point is that when we see that 2000 was stopped, it is not that we needed to exponentially increase the production of 500. In the end, I'll tell you what to do with this information. You don't have to, don't have to learn this data. Last, I'll show you and then we'll make sense of this. This data shows you counterfeiting, counterfeiting of notes and when it comes to counterfeiting as of right now the fraud or the fake currency they are choosing 500 rather than 2000 to be the one which they want to introduce into the market so counterfeit notes fake notes in denomination of 2000 have remained low and are in a decline but more than 91000 fake 500 notes have been detected by the end of 2023 while this number is much lower than the fake currency detected or withdrawn or after the withdrawal of the 500 banknote between before demonetization, it is still in a constant, uh, consistent rise in a sense that 500 rupee note is the one which the fake currency or the counterfeiters want to use. Now, what do you do with this information? I have given you a lot of information right now. Obviously, you don't learn each and everything. What you do with this information is very simple. 2000 rupee note has been discontinued, uh, has been asked, uh, the government has asked to deposit to 2000 rupee notes. It's not discontinued, it will remain legal tender, but they are trying to remove the 2000 rupee note out of the economy itself. First point. Second point is people tend to argue why. People tend to argue why. 
Now, very simply, the argument which the government is saying is that the 2000 rupee note was needed to absorb the demonetized currency and therefore its purpose has been fulfilled. Now, how do I support that argument? I support that argument by arguing that if you look at it, the RBI has been gradually moving towards this move which happened in May of 2023. Now, please pay attention. This is what you use in the examination. This is what is very, very important for you in the exam generally. When we talk about percentage of 2000 rupee notes as per money circulation, meaning if, if we have n amount of money circulation or value in the economy in bank notes, what is the percentage? From close to 50% in 2018, we have brought it down to 10.8%, which is that 40% of 2000 rupee notes we have already removed vis-a-vis -vis what we call as percentage of the total currency in the economy. And 77% of all money circulated today is more or less 500 rupees. Second is the aspect that we can see this decline to 10.8% in the sense that volume has also gone down and since 2018 we have reduced or we have stopped the production of 2000 generally. We are not printing 2000. Last but not the least, counterfeiting you leave, very simply, when we have reduced, when in 2018, when in 2018, the production of 2000 was stopped, it did not automatically see a rise in 500. We have been able to offset it through the 200 and the 100. Very simply, this only shows you one thing, which is that 2000 was already becoming redundant even before we took this call on 19th May 2023. Since 2020, the RBI has been very consciously trying to flush the money out of the economy in 2000 rupee notes. Now, what type of question can come? I have a question in the end. Don't worry about that. Very simply, very simply, counterfeiting means fake currency very simply counterfeiting as it is the counterfeiters the people who are making that currency have already not chosen 2000 as the counterfeit but rather 500 because that is one denomination which they can push easily and as it is there's an uptick there's a rise in it but it is still very low to what we see previously or in the pre demonetization era as it is we are now catching a lot of cross border activity in which this the fake currency has been caught from bangladesh or from pakistan so i hope now all of this makes sense wherein the economy 10.8 percent of all value is in 2000 rupee notes 77 percent is in 500 volume has gone down and there has not been a corresponding increase don't have to get caught up, but very interesting, very interesting article talking about how it has already become redundant. So can I, can I close this topic and we can move to the prelims by each section? Come on. Got it? Perfect. Where is that 40% gone? It's not gone anywhere. When you see this share and this share. So that 40% reduction has seen an increase in 500. That has been converted into 500. They have rather taken that 200 rupee, 2000 out and rather converted into 200, 100 or 500. It's not gone anywhere. It's just that they stopped the production. So the value changed in its denomination. That's it. Okay. So before I move to prelims by our orientation will change prelims oriented. Three topics we've discussed. First is biodiversity. Biodiversity, what we try to understand is the concept of multi-stakeholder approach, multi-landscape approach. Indian Forest Service is very, very limiting. First summary. Second, how is, the, how, does, how is that article very, very important? It is important because it gives you the justification for taking 2000 out, which can be asked to you. Was it justified or what was the reason or was it sudden or what is the economic rationale behind it? A very GS paper 3, very important that way. So we first discussed the concept of biodiversity. Second, we discussed the concept of graphene, a revolutionary material which can change everything for you and me if used and can be made cheap. More than that, India needs to pump up its production and its research in this area. Third was a very interesting 
the discussion on the 2000 rupee note how it had already become redundant by 2023 10.8% this is what you can remember 10.8% of the economy what we call as value of economy in any denomination was 2000 rupee notes and further its volume had already gone down and what is more significant for you and me is understand one thing 77% of all banknotes today are actually 500 which is quite significant that is with this we finish the mains and prelims oriented area and we move to topics which are smaller straightforward related to basic aspects of prelims here you need to remember certain facts they are developing stories can become important later so first is GDP expanded by 6.1% in the last quarter of 2022-23 significant because this acceleration will pump up or actually boost the overall GDP of that year from 7% to 7.2% and this has been this data has been released by the NSO on Wednesday what is more important is what is the gross value addition of each of these sectors because see GDP does not give you the real picture because it is the it's picture of the whole of the economy not telling you which sector is adding what value addition so the gross value addition has also risen to 7% in 2022-23 compared to 8.8% that is also a way of very simply how COVID-19 shock has been absorbed and now everything is coming back to normalcy so the data is also showing that however however what is more concerning is the manufacturing sector sector the GVA growth was just 1.3% and had slid from 11% earlier in the year earlier. Therefore, compared to 11% previously, we are at 1.3%. Very simply, this is the problem. Wherein, wherein the contraction of the manufacturing sector is a little bit of the concern. So, manufacturing GVA growth slid to just 1.3% after 11% a year earlier, despite a 4.5% rebound in the final quarter itself. So, overall, manufacturing sector has shown a decline. On the other hand, agricultural GVA grew by 4%, up from 3.5% in the previous year. This shows the resilience of the agricultural sector, be it COVID-19, be it post-COVID-19, it has always shown certain type of value addition in the larger context. Further, the finance, real estate and professional sectors saw a growth of 7.1% compared to 4.7% and the gross value addition of trade, hotels, transportation, communication sector along with broadcasting and services also grew 14% which is marginally faster than last year. So what you see, obviously all of this data you don't have to learn. Let's interpret it. First is Last quarter 6.1%, overall growth 7.2%. First thing first. Second, very simply manufacturing has not has is showing a constant decline vis-a-vis -vis last quarter, vis-a-vis -vis the last year itself. Further, service sector, agricultural sector, and other sectors which were impacted by COVID-19 have now come back to their normalcy. However, the simple point of the matter is this is a matter of concern. That's it. So out of all this data, don't have to become an economist and go into each and every aspect of it. Very simply, 7.2% simple point manufacturing is a matter of concern. Agriculture has shown resilience and very simply service sector and other sectors which were impacted by COVID-19 are now back to the normal. Very simply, this is how you interpret data because UPSC will ask you trends, not data. Thereafter, thereafter. OTT platforms, we all use it, Amazon Prime, we have Disney Plus Hotstar, Z, this, that. Very simply, now because the government is quite concerned about tobacco usage in India, on World Tobacco Day itself, all OTT platforms, streaming platforms, have to display an anti-tobacco warning on the screen as soon as a movie or a serial or any form of what we call as soap opera, if it is showing a cigarette in the hand of any of the actors, it has to show a certain warning on the, si on the, on the screen itself. And this has been done under the cigarette and other tobacco products, the COPPA 2004 Act itself. Under it, under it, at the bottom of the screen, tobacco kills and tobacco causes cancer. These two messages are going to be shown. This has now become mandatory. 
this has now become mandatory very simply no ott platform has been taken into consideration this is a unilateral decision which the government has taken that this used to happen in in what we call as movies in theater halls but now all platforms which give you entertainment at your home also need to do this further two topics we've done first topic related to gdp growth 7.2% overall acceleration is 7 6.1% in this quarter last quarter this one very simply ott platforms have to show tobacco kills and tobacco causes cancer concept on any screen when there is use of tobacco now a very important what we call as program called the ayushman bharat pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana now what the, it's not a new thing but it gives you the performance of it so from cancer treatment to emergency care to orthopedics to urology under the pm j the data released shows that close to 61000 crore worth of what we call as claims have come through in this program itself 5 crore hospital admissions have happened and close to 61000 crores was dispersed under this scheme but what is more interesting and important is that 49% of ayushman cards were given to women and 48% of all admissions under the uh, ayushman bharat program was also women itself therefore implemented in 33 states and union territories remember delhi odisha and west bengal are the only three states uh, two states and one ut which does not have ayushman bharat under this the ayushman bharat scheme 23 crore beneficiaries availed this benefit however three three two states and one ut it is not there so again don't have to learn this data understand one thing that we are going for tertiary treatment very simply the ayushman bharat program is working this is more interesting for you for the prelims examination because there are three two states and one ut in which it is not applied and further women women has have been in the focus this can be used in a social issues question and also talk about healthcare in women generally thereafter again a small concept but an interesting one which talks about the world's largest grain storage program in the cooperative sector the scheme has not been named but the cabinet has approved an inter ministerial committee for facilitation of this and wherein the ministry of agriculture and Fa and farmers welfare consumer affairs food and public distribution along with the food processing industries all will come together to timely introduce the food storage program in that regard now we don't know what it will be called it will be a pilot program in 10 districts itself but now in the cooperative sector we are trying to trying to trying to have an integrated approach integrated approach wherein all ministries are coming under one roof itself so again this is a developing concept but because the union cabinet took a decision important for you generally now last topic and then i'll give you the summary of whatever we've done till this point again the cabinet gave a nod to a program which has been running smart cities but a program within it which is called the cities now under city investment to innovate integrate and sustain this you need to learn this is the full form of cities very simply this program is about smart city mission but has a very specific approach what is the approach is more important for you it is about waste management climate oriented actions therefore therefore the selected projects which are promoting a circular economy state level and institutional strengthening will be done so as to make sure that cities 2.0 can be implemented in 18 cities based on the concept of waste management and climate oriented reform so before i move to the mains question itself let me consolidate everything we've done in the today's session we've discussed eight different topics first we discussed the concept of biodiversity i hope everybody is with me till this point you don't have to learn the cities you just have to understand the concept you understand the basic idea of this art, of this uh, discussion itself the eight topics which we discussed till this point first we discussed the concept of biodiversity why is it important 
why stakeholders need to be brought together. Second, we discuss the concept of graphene, why is it important, how India needs to step up. Third, we discuss the rationale of removing the 2000 rupee note itself. Thereafter, we move to five small topics, but straightforward topics. We first discussed how the GDP has grown 6.1% in the last quarter, taking it to 7.2%. Then we discussed the, the performance of the Ayushman Bharat program itself. Thereafter, small topics, six, three very small topics. One, a nod to the world's largest grain storage program itself. Thereafter, the concept of the cities program. And last but not the least, the concept of OTT platforms. That is it, OTT platform, anti-tobacco warning. So if all of this makes sense to you, it's very small but interesting topics, we'll look at the mains question. Okay. Graphene is a revolutionary material and has multi-sectoral uses. Elucidate. Elucidate means you need to explain to them how it can be used. Then, this is the type of question which we can expect out of the data which was given in the 2000 rupee note thing. The 2000 rupee note had served its purpose. Discuss in the context of trends in supply and circulation by the RBI. This is a very realistic question which can come in your examination and I hope that you will be able to answer it. So with this I would like to end this session. I will be there tomorrow again with another 7 to 8 topics out of the Indian newspaper. I hope everything made sense and generally these 8 topics are now etched in your mind. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. I will see you tomorrow. Take care.